Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Today, we're going to look at Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, specifically about the barbarian subclasses, Path of the Beast and Path of Wild Magic. But before we do, I'm going to have my companion, Vander, uh, talk to us about some optional class features. This time around for Barbarian, they gave him a couple new things to work with, which is great, uh, mainly at 10th and uh, 3rd and then 10th level. Uh, they gave proficiency with a new skill, uh, which, I mean, Barbarians don't get a lot, so, like, skill proficiency is really the least you're, you should be giving them. And with that, they can at least contribute in a couple ways beyond either just being angry and just punching things, um, which, like, they can still be great at those, but the primal knowledge is pretty helpful um and then instinctive pounce which is for seventh level from barbarians is now when a bonus action you rage you can also move up to half your speed so that gives you extra movement movement so when you rage because you need to get someplace you now can get there a lot quicker but uh we are starting off with the main prim primal path right now is going to be path of the beast so manny if you want to take it from here so pretty much Path of the Beast is that if it's a way of playing a wear or lincanthrope like creature without having the curse, pretty much. I think this is a, a very good uh, subclass. I do like uh, Infectious Fury. Um, the idea that you could strike at someone and you not only give them psychic damage, but they also become in infected with, with rage. So they strike someone else next to them. I think that's a really fun, fun ability. Um, I, I do like, you know, just as if you were uh, bitten by a lycanthrope, you, you could grow claws and, and a tail and, and all these other features. Um, it could lead to some really creative, what, what beasts you would pick. Like imagine someone picked an elephant or uh, a giraffe, uh, a, hippo, a, a hippo. Uh, what would that look like? How would, how, would that be, how would that role play out? I would love to see something like that. So that's, that's what I'm excited most about, about this subclass. Yeah, I, I agree. I like especially the third level feature form of the beast where you're taking on those traits. And like, I love that idea. I think you're right where like these features, like the bite and claws where you can do some damage. Uh, I, I, Tabaxi and then the shifter races, I think are two that like already do some unarmed damage uh, with claws and like hands and feet. But I mean, as a barbarian, if you're anything else, if you're like a, a gnome, now suddenly you have these claws that you're just <laughs> killing people with, um, <laughs> which is pretty great. And yeah, you can do, you get bite, claws, or tail. So uh, an appendage growing from somewhere besides getting that like bestial nature. Um, I will say my one big criticism, and this might just be me thinking that it's not a big deal, but I guess at level 20, it could be. Um, Call the Hunt, their 14th level feature. Uh, originally in the Unearth Arcana, they had it so that uh, you could share your um, reckless attack feature, uh, meaning that like other people could hit with advantage. Um, and I think that is so much better than what they switched it to, which was you gain another D6 damage when you do an attack roll. Uh, the idea of you sharing that with like a uh, rogue and a fighter, like I understand that. I guess maybe that like really breaks the mechanics a bit, but like love the idea of you powering up your team and then like your rogue goes in for a strike and your fighter goes in for four or five or ten strikes and like annihilates like whatever your opponent is maybe i just I, I like the side of the player too much and i think that that would look more awesome than like 1d6 more damage at level 14 which is just a lot <laughs> <laughs> i don't have any like strong criticisms for this except for maybe again I'm just concerned. I have to look into like Tabaxi and Shifter to see like um, if, they, if, there may, if there may be any issues arising um, balance wise, rules wise. Uh, but overall, is a is a pretty good, um, pretty good subclass. Path of Wild Magic, though, I love that even more. Only for the role playing imagery aspect to it. Uh, I love the idea that um, uh, you have to do, you could. You could just have wild magic explode from you, um, and uh, something random may happen when you're you're in that rage. So instead of just being the typical barbarian, usually when we think of barbarians, we think of them like typically like, oh man, I smash like like a whole <laughs> like a whole Conan variation. Um, this is something I think much more exciting and different. 
Uh, my only quibble, and again, you get you get these this ability to have the wild surge at uh, at third level. But my only little thing about it is that I wish the chart when you have wild magic happen was much longer. It's only uh, eight eight possible options, and for me, I'm like, okay, I can see that being uh, certain effects become too repetitive after a certain amount of time. I wish it was, um, I wish, honestly, I'll be honest, I wish it was like a, uh, a D100, 100, 100 random things that may happen. Even okay. 20, 20, like a D20 would have been nice, just like, because the chances that you hit in the same option a lot really aren't likely. But if you're, if you are a barbarian, you're raging a fair amount of the time. So you're, that, that D8 is going to get old, but like, Maybe it's easier to plan by. Like, if you are playing a barbarian, maybe you prefer a simpler playset. So having only eight options is better than having twenty. But like, if you're playing this, you probably want that chaos. Like, that's the reason why you're playing this. So, I agree with you there. Um, I would say the only thing that really bugged me, um, a small bug, was that the magical awareness that you had. You used to be able to glow the color of the magic that you thought was around, and I thought that was just really fun. Um, but the rest of the features are great. I love that they. I was really worried they were going to get rid of the magic uh, wild surge table. I'm really happy they kept that. Um, and like later on, when you get level up, you get to control it. Kind of, you get to like roll multiple options and then decide which one you like better. Um, but there was an ability before where you were able to regain your party's spell slots, um, and I really loved that idea um and they, they kept it which i am very happy about as well the bolstering magic effect where like you roll a d3 and someone gains a spell slot they changed it a little bit and i like the other version better but they still kept it which i, I just love the idea that your magic is harnessing it, other people are harnessing your magic and you're bolstering your party and it's just this is such a unique flavor for barbarian and i love it yeah it's fantastic so for those of you that have read tasha's um cauldron of everything i read this section what did you think what did did you like it what would you change let us know in the comments below like and subscribe support the channel and have a good day